I will be attempting to survive 100 days in a cave only world in the brand new 1.17 Minecraft update, which means there will be amethyst blocks, the cute axolotls, and the hairy goats. Speaking about hairy things, today's video is sponsored. Oh, that is such a weird transition. Today's video is sponsored by Manscaped. I know some of you guys might not be old enough to have hair on your uh, your merchandise down there, but to my boys out there that's watching, you guys know it's kind of scary cutting around the goods down there. Manscaped provides high quality and premium grooming products like their brand new lawnmower 4.0 shaver this thing cuts through jungles <clears throat> i know from my personal experiences and you also don't get any nicks or cuts when you're shaving with their skin safe technology it's cordless and waterproof so you can shear those leaves in the shower it even charges wirelessly on this sick looking charging dock and with the brand new lawnmower 4.0 it provides you with four different sizes of the trimmer guards so if you guys have a little sapling or a giant jungle tree it doesn't matter manscaped has your back or should I say balls? So go impress those ladies with 20% off your order using code COOKIE plus free international shipping, which is awesome because I hate paying shipping at the first link below. Enough about balls, onto the video. The second I spawned in, I was amazed on how big the cave was. But more importantly, the first thing I looked for was food. Because you guys know me, I'm like a thousand pounds. So I killed this chicken at the bottom of my feet. I then ran to the edge of the cliff and I got an amazing view of the entire cave. There were super long vines and giant spikes coming from the ceiling. And then I got attacked by a spider. So I ran away trying to look for some shelter and some more food. I found this overgrown mine shaft that was full of green stuff like vines and spikes. Well, I mean, the spikes aren't really green. But anyways, I ran into to some glow bears that were growing from the vines. As kids, we are taught to not eat wild berries. But come on, you guys know me. I just love food and eating. I mean, that explains my name, a cookie god. But I ate the berries and I didn't die. So I collected all of the berries that I can find. I also ran into some weird pink flower growing from the ceiling. I'm not even sure why I was so amused by this. I just have a brain of a six-year-old. I also then found out that the block I was standing on wasn't grass. It was moss blocks. Yeah, that is pretty gross. But once I got out of the cave, I found a giant pond or lake right beside me so i ran down the mountain to check it out maybe there's some fish in there that i can kill and eat man i just want to eat everything i swear my two kittens were looking pretty juicy when i got them <clears throat> anyways once i got down to the lake i found some axolotls swimming in there if only i can eat them but i wanted to make a giant axolotl farm later in the video just because they are so cute just take a look at them doesn't their cute face just make you want to just like eat them nah i'm just kidding enough of the eating unless nah hmm. <clears throat> on day two i realized there are just way too many mobs in this cave because sunlight doesn't reach into the cave because it's a cave only world there are always mobs everywhere so on day two i spent that time mining up this tree right beside me once i gathered enough wood i made myself a wooden pickaxe and an axe and continued destroying this tree i'm sorry team trees but i had to do it i then made myself a wooden sword and now i was ready to defend myself from all of the mobs die you stupid zombie Zombie. On day three, I realized I was munching through these berries way too quickly. I knew I needed to find myself another source of food fast. And while looking around the mountains, I found myself a whole bunch of chickens at the top of the cave. I have no idea what they're doing up there, but we're about to make a KFC farm. But of course, these creepers wouldn't leave me alone. Just like every single video. I swear, I'm a creeper magnet. But anyways, I started breaking the grass on the ground to try to get some seeds. Got blown up by another creeper. Killed the creeper's brother. And finally got up to the chickens to lure them down with my seeds look at all those chickens and they're lucky they have feathers and wings because when i was jumping down this mountain i was breaking my feet and my ankles while they just float down peacefully life is so unfair but anyways once i got them down which took a pretty long time i dug a two by two hole in the ground and pushed my drumsticks into the hole question what is your favorite part of the chicken to eat a is it the wings b is it the drumsticks or c is it the thighs let me know in the comments because my favorite part of the chicken to eat are the breasts. <clears throat> Oh, I'm so weird. All right, moving on. I also thought it might be a good idea to grow these glow berries that I have to make even more food. So I built a little farm a couple blocks in the sky and planted my glow berries to grow. But now it only leaves me with four glow berries to eat. Oh man, I'm starving. So while I wait for the berries to grow, I decided to spend day four to 10 mining. I didn't even have stone tools yet. Yeah, boy, lacking out here. I ran around trying to look for a place to start mining until I ran into a zombie apocalypse. And then I got nailed in the forehead by a 
ass skeleton. And you thought I was kidding. I actually have an arrow in my forehead. I'm half unicorn, half cookie now. But I ran to the side of the mountain and quickly dug in and blocked myself off from all of the mobs. I collected a whole bunch of cobblestone, made my basic stone tools. And the first thing I collected was the raw vomit, which is copper and some coal. If only you can use copper to make some armor. Eventually, I finally ran into a cave. And after a little bit of exploring, I found a little dirt spat pit, but the pit, a little dirt patch. And I needed the dirt in order to make myself a farm. Eventually, I finally ran into my first iron. That took quite a long time, but I am on 1.17, so now I get raw iron. And this will be extremely helpful once I get fortune 3. Once I got out, I was expecting my glow bears to be fully grown, but there was only one berry there that I can eat. That is not exciting at all. Something more exciting though, a zombie villager came up and said hi to me. And I really needed a friend. So after playing merry-go-round for like a good four minutes, I finally got him trapped inside a little cage. I'll save you soon, buddy. I mean, it might not be soon because I need like a golden apple and potions. And that's a pretty far way away because I'm still in the stone age. So uh, yeah, be patient. <laughs> I then threw down my eggs that my chickens pooped out, hoping to hatch some baby ones. And with my luck, I only had one egg hatch. Yeah, my KFC production house is not turning out that great. But I finally started breeding them with my six wheat seeds. And on day 12 to 13, I wanted to make myself a little home. And I was way too lazy to make myself an actual house. So I just started mining into the mountain. <laughs> Once I had the little box carved out of the mountain, I filled it up with the usual stuff like crafting tables, furnaces, and my chests. And I can't forget the door. I mean doors. <laughs> I put three doors as my entrance into my house. I mean, might as well, right? I have two extra doors and it will protect me from all of the mobs. My brain is huge. It's kind of annoying trying to open all three of the doors though to get in and out though. All right, maybe my brain isn't that huge. <clears throat> So I decided to take some other defensive measures to protect myself from all of the mobs. So I made a whole bunch of torches and slapped them all over the ground around my house. But while I was doing that, I got attacked by a skeleton, which left me at three hearts. One more shot and I would be dead. So I ran back to my house. But instead, I ran into my mine shaft. So I had to make a U-turn and run into my actual house. And that was probably the scariest run of my life. And somehow I still have an arrow in my forehead. How is that possible? So I grabbed my iron and copper out of the furnaces and made some iron armor to protect myself. I also made all of the iron tools. And this time I did not forget, I made a shield. <laughs> I told you guys I'm big brained. <laughs> But once the mobs disappeared and I had iron armor, I ran back out there and lit up the entire area with torches. And when I thought I was safe, I accidentally looked at a Slenderman and he started attacking me. I got so low. I literally thought I was going to die right here. I was at two and a half hearts and I ran for my life. I took some fall damage and ended up being at one and a half hearts. But luckily, I got home safely until I realized my cave was three blocks high. So the Enderman could teleport inside. So I just hid between these doors. Oh man, I was scared. I didn't have any food as well. Well, so I just waited here and cried. On day 14, I slowly peeked around my door to see if the Enderman was still waiting for me, but luckily he was gone. Haha, <laughs> my smell scared him away. See kids, this is why you don't shower. It saves you from the Slender Man. But anyways, I was starving and my glow berry farm wasn't really working. So I decided to start working on a farm. Once I placed on all of the dirt, I had to take the risky journey to go get some water. I didn't have any food on me and I was already at three and a half hearts. Ow. Alright, three hearts. Once I got into the desert biome, I had to dodge all of these creepers but i finally made it down to the water and i grabbed my two buckets and i was off the only mob i was scared of was the skeleton because those things can snipe me from like a jamaica away so i had to keep my eyes peeled but luckily i made it back up to my base with no harm done i'm a ninja guys a fat one i mean what why am i dissing myself once i got off the water into the farm i started hoeing the dirt then i grabbed my two only carrots and planted them down oh man i am so broke luckily though i had some bone meal and i ended up getting seven carrots in return now i'm rich oh who am i kidding i live in a mountain for crying out loud but hey i have one wheat seed i mean that's something right uh, nope so I ran back down to the grass to try to get some more seeds so I can plant them and get more seeds in return so I can start breeding these chickens. And I got attacked by a skeleton and we got in an intense match that left me at two hearts. But you guys know me, I never die. After all of that grass, I got 10 wheat seeds and planted them all down. Bone mealed it all up and I ended up getting five pieces of wheat, which only made one piece of bread. 
I'm starving, man. Someone sent help. On day 17, I decided to take the risky journey back into that overgrown mine shaft that I found and try to collect some berries. But for 17 days, no berries have grown back. I might as well start eating grass like a cow. I'm starting to turn into my girlfriend as days go on. There is some good news, though, because I ran into a spawner. This was right below my house, too. And I was hoping there would be food inside the chests, but they were empty. Literally nothing. I did end up finding a couple of berries, though, which got me super excited until a creeper came and snuck behind me and killed me. No, I'm just kidding. I luckily blocked it with my shield. But then he blew up all of my berries that I just picked off the vines. Oh my god. The world really doesn't want me to eat. Maybe it's a sign telling me to lose some weight or something. And as I was looking around the cave, I realized there was an insane amount of glow berries growing from the ceiling. So with one heart and a dream, I ran over there to collect those berries. And I was so lucky because my most feared mob, the skeleton, shot an arrow at me but missed. Even if he hit my left toenail, I would have died. I only had one heart. I had no idea where he was. So I was spinning around in circles with my shield up. And once he shot another arrow, I just booked it. Once I got close enough to the berries, I started bridging over there. And I broke as many berry vines as I could. This took a pretty long time because I was running out of blocks. But eventually, I finally made it down safely to collect all of the berries and they were nowhere to be found. All of them despawned. I was pretty upset. At least I ate some of the berries though and regenerated some health. I was starving, so I had to do what I had to do and I killed my chickens. However, I did leave a couple to carry on the family. And while I wait for the crops to grow, I decided to spend the next three days mining for some diamonds so I can make some diamond armor and be protected from all of those mobs. After a ton of exploring, I ran into this cave that led into a huge cavern and it led me to not one, not two, but three veins of diamonds. Wow, that was a big voice crack. <clears throat> and this took a pretty long time because I had to walk everywhere. I refused to eat my chicken, so I walked to not lose hunger. Once I arrived back to my base, I got 23 diamonds and a whole bunch of other stuff that no one really cares about, like gold and lapis. And that was a pretty successful modding trip for just walking. I only ate one piece of chicken the entire trip. Once I got back, I harvested my farm, which took forever to grow. Then I went to gather some resources like wood because I wanted to make an actual house for me to live in. I was sick of living in the ground. After mining an entire tree down, I ended up getting five stacks of wood. I then went to get some cobblestone from the ground so I can turn it into stone brick to build with. And spoiler alert, I didn't even touch the stone brick. But hey, at least I felt pretty cool running six furnaces at once. I felt like I was being productive because usually I procrastinate everything. Does anyone else relate? On day 25, once I had enough resources, it was time to say goodbye to my home. I wanted to explore deeper into the cave because I haven't really explored much and build my house on one of these giant spikes in the middle of the entire cave. I have some plans to make a spiral staircase around a spike. So I made a whole bunch of slabs and stairs, traveled my way through the cavern over to the giant spike, and started making some spiral staircases around the spike all the way to the top. And making spiral staircases look good and functional is so hard. I can't seem to make the spiral staircase look good. If only I had some leaves. But from the bottom, the spiral staircase didn't look that bad, but not that great. But I couldn't get a nice view because all of these mobs kept attacking me. It was pretty annoying. I think that was high enough though, so I started working on the platform that would be my new house. Once I had the platform made. I started placing some pillars around to act as some walls in a circle shape, obviously, because circles are the best shape in Minecraft. I then started working on the ceiling. Once I had this cool little design, I was getting hungry, so I went over to my old base to harvest my wheat and my carrots. I then used the extra seeds to breed my chickens. Don't worry, I didn't forget about you guys. And with the wheat I harvested, I ended up making eight pieces of bread. Talking about living lavish. Anyways, I then traveled to a desert biome in the cave and collected some sand because I wanted to make the house mostly out of glass. So then I can have a beautiful view of the entire cavern right in the smack middle. Once all of the sand I mined was smelted into glass, I ran back to my spike home and I was approached by a big green booger. Wow, I haven't said that word in a while. It makes me feel so young. Booger, 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 booger. Devin Booger from the Phoenix Suns? Nah, that was kind of disrespectful. Only my NBA basketball fans will understand. Sorry, I got distracted uh, way too easily by myself. I then started filling the walls with the glass. I then started working on a little chest area inside the spike and placed down all of my chests. For some reason, I really love making chest rooms. Now that my house was done, it had an amazing view of the entire cavern. Now I can see everything around me. And it looks pretty decent from the bottom. My house looks like a snake that's climbing up the spike right now. Kinda pog. Why did I even say that? And on day 33, I started moving all of my items into my new chest room. And I'm sorry if you guys hear a fan. It's so hot in my room. My window is closed, my door is closed, and it's like 35 degrees. And I'm voiceovering, so it's so hot. But anyways, once I moved all of 
of my items away. I started breaking down my old farm so I can make a new one at my new place. And I had to leave these chickens here. I'll come back for you guys one day. I also wanted to go to the nether, so I went underground to get some obsidian. And I'm just so stupid. I started mining obsidian with my iron pickaxe. I swear I only have like six brain cells. Maybe seven on a good day. Once I collected enough obsidian, I got flint on my first try when I mined gravel. I'm just the luckiest person alive. Once I got back to my house, I started building the nether portal. And then I lit the baby up. But before I go in, I wanted to decorate the room a little bit. So I just carried on the same theme over to my nether portal. I put down some dark oak stairs to cover this gap on top of the portal and filled in the walls and the ceiling with glass. And while I'm in the nether, I obviously want to trade with some piglins for some ender pearls. So I went underground to go gold mining. While doing that, I was lucky enough to find some diamonds on top of lava. Once I came back from gold mining, I ended up getting 68 pieces of gold and threw it all in the furnace. I wish I had fortune three because I would have so much more gold right now. And once it was smelted, I was ready to go. I jumped into the portal and I spawned into one of these dead delta biome thingies. I hate this place. It's actually a wasteland. I swear every single 100 days video, when I go to the nether, I spawn in one of these biomes. How is it possible? I then did some parkour to make it over to the mainland. And I realized pigments will start attacking me because I had no gold armor. But luckily, there was the crimson forest right beside me i made a crafting table and then made some gold boots and then the same old exploring the nether to find myself a nether fortress but this time i got pretty lucky because i didn't have to spend like an hour trying to find one it was pretty close by once i got in i looted some chests and stole some nether warts and then went over to kill some blazes i almost ended up dying too i got to one and a half hearts i kept walking into fire i guess i'm attracted to hot things if you know what i mean that wasn't even a good joke what am i doing anyways once i got eight blaze rods i went to go find myself some piglins after trading all of my gold i was only lucky enough to get seven ender pearls so i'm gonna have to go enderman hunting in the cave after that i collected a lot of bone blocks because i know that gives me a lot of bone meal and i also found an abandoned nether portal and it was finishable so i grabbed the obsidian and finished it up thinking it would give me a quick way home but i was pretty surprised where it took me i went through the portal and it actually brought me to the normal minecraft world i can see the sunlight finally so i guess this isn't a cave only world i guess the title is kind of a lie and a clickbait but let's just pretend it is because I didn't know that this existed. Anyways, I was pretty happy to finally see daylight and I spawned right beside trees. So I decided to mine all of the wood because like, come on, it's sitting right there. I have to. But I only mined down one tree because I didn't want to cheat too much, even though I'm just mining a tree. But I went back into the nether to go find my original portal to take me back to my cave only world. Once I found my first portal, I had to do some parkour to get over there. But I missed jumped one block and I fell to my death. No, I'm just kidding. I landed with two and a half hearts but i was kind of scared and once i arrived back into my cave only world i realized how sad and depressing this is i cannot see the sky and all i see is stone all around me maybe at 101 days i'll leave the caves and live a normal life in the normal world but for now i'm stuck here on day 43 i decided to go exploring the cave a little bit because i knew i left out some villages and houses to raid i barged into this house and i was greeted with bookshelves exactly what i was looking for and it didn't seem like anyone was living here so i stole them all once i left the houses i was greeted with a whole bunch of zombies i guess that's karma and i was so scared no i'm just kidding i just turned around and walked away because you know zombies are so dang slow i then found another like house thingy that was sitting in the water i went to check it out but it was pretty bare there was literally nothing there i mean at least it was decorated with a whole bunch of leaves that makes it a lot better i did steal some fishing rods and some fish off the ground though because like your boy can eat anything i'm just a garbage can after that i ran around collecting some of those spikes and then i ran into the holy amethyst block inside the water and you guys know i have to go mine it and the sound it makes when you're breaking this block is so majestic just take a listen and I don't even know why I use the word majestic. I feel like a god now or something. Well, I mean, there is god in my name. Anyways, once I borrowed all of the amethyst blocks from the lake, I ran back home to start making an enchantment table area. Once I had all the bookshelves down, I got level 30 enchants. And the first enchantment on my diamond pickaxe was efficiency 4. So you guys know I had to take it. And luckily, I got unbreaking 3 with it. After that, I started decorating the enchantment table area. I wish I had some leaves because that would make it look so much better. But I'll get to that eventually. But once I was done decorating, this is what what it looked like. Yup, it's pretty ugly, I know, guys. But I also made a diamond axe to enchant, and I got fortune 3 efficiency 4. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna use fortune 3 on the axe for. Maybe it works with, like, plants or farming stuff. I have no idea. But I was running low on food, so I started expanding my spiral staircase up the spike to make some room for the farm. And I was pretty lazy to make a brand new platform, so I decided to just make the farm on top of my ceiling. I did expand a little bit, though. But anyways, the same old thing. I placed down dirt, hold it up, put some water down, and plant 
last ate my potatoes that I got from zombies. The farm was looking pretty nice high up in the air. And luckily, all those bone blocks came in handy from the nether. It gave me a whole bunch of bone meal so I can expand my farm even more. After a little bit of repeating, I was able to completely fill up my entire farm. And I was left with about two stacks of potatoes to eat. Oh, if only it was like 19 stacks or maybe four double chests. On day 47, I ran around the entire cave hunting for endermen because I needed their balls. Talking about balls, I hope you guys enjoyed that Manscaped ad. Go get yourself Manscaped for 20% off. And let me tell you, um, it's pretty good. It shaves jungles from uh, my personal experience. <clears throat> Anyways, while running around hunting for some endermen, I ran into the desert temple. So I jumped down to see what's inside the chests and there was literally nothing inside. I was kind of disappointed. I was baited so hard. I mean, at least there was four TNT. Yay. Not even the regular amount. After an entire day of hunting down endermen, I ended up getting 13 ender pearls. Well, technically only six because I had seven from the nether. But before I go fight the ender dragon, I needed to enchant my armor. And I remembered I found a spawner earlier in the video. So I ran over there to start working on a zombie XP grinder. Once I got there, I cleared out the entire area, took down all of the spikes and chains and all of the messy debris and overgrown grass and moss everywhere and started mining out the ground to make enough room for the grinder. After spending about 10 minutes just mining stone, I had a big enough area for the grinder. Then I put down my water buckets, placed down all of my water buckets that will lead them to the killing area. And this took pretty long, but already I had so many zombies inside the hole. I then made a viewing area with some glass to see the zombies spawn. But then I realized we are in 1.17 and there are tinted glass. So I ran home to get some amethyst shards to make some tinted glass. And this way I can see the zombies, but no light will get through. And for the next four days, I just afk the farm and collected XP so I can have enough to enchant all of my armor and tools. Once I got 30 levels, I enchanted my pants and got protection for no unbreaking though, unfortunately. And then I went right back to the grinder. Some more XP grinding later, I got 34 levels and enchanted all of my armor. And at this point, I didn't even care what enchantments I got because getting XP from this grinder took way too long. On day 61, I was feeling kind of lonely. So I downloaded Tinder. No, nah, I'm just playing. <laughs> Unless maybe I should. Nah, but seriously though, I started working on a little enclosure for a pet and I had to make it in a circle because the square is just too boring. It was a pretty nice circle. I'm not going to lie. I then added some oak wood to contrast it a little bit, you know, lighten up the color. Pro building tip 101. No, nah, I'm just kidding. I suck at building. I then went to collect some deep slate blocks because it looks kind of cool and used it as the flooring. Once the enclosure was all finished, I had to fill it up all with water. And you guys probably know what pet I'm keeping in here. Obviously goats. Duh. No, nah, I'm just kidding. I grabbed all of my buckets and ran over to the pond that is full of axolotls. The cutest pet you can have. I dived in and the first axolotl I got was a pink one. And I collected a whole bunch more to fill all six of my buckets. I'm just stealing the wildlife, man. But from a distance, I was looking at my house on the spike and it looks pretty sick. Once I got home, I put all of the axolotls I collected into my little enclosure and they swam around pretty happily. I'm sure they weren't that happy though. And I repeated the same process three more times and I was able to get at least like 20 axolotls in here. On day 71, when I was running around, I ran into some cave inside a cave, which is kind of weird inception, but there was a huge amethyst section to it. And I was probably the happiest man alive. I love this block so much. And I started mining it up and stealing the amethyst from the earth. I could fall asleep listening to this block break. But once I mined it all up, which took a pretty long time, I did leave a little spot of amethyst blocks though. Cause you know, I'm a nice guy and I didn't want to steal all of the amethyst away from the earth. I only stole like 99.99. .99. 98%. <laughs> I also started mining this spike for its resources because I think I'll use it to build something. And once I got home on day 75 to 77, I started working on Amethyst Shrine. Well, it first started with me covering my entire house with Amethyst blocks. And then it led to me creating a huge shrine and a huge throne for me. But like I am the a cookie god, like I should have a throne, right? I should be making a throne every single 100 days video. That's a good idea. That should be a tradition. That should start. But anyways, once I was done making the throne, I sat there like a, que a king. I almost said queen yeah <clears throat> yeah i'm a man on day 78 i spent some time flooding up the area around my base so no moss would spawn i'm so sick of dealing with these mobs and once i had all the torches placed down i think i covered a pretty solid area hopefully no moss will spawn but to upgrade my defense even more i placed down a whole bunch of spikes all around my island my island well i played too much one block my base to scare away all of the mobs i mean in reality it doesn't really do anything but hey let's just pretend the spikes scare the mobs okay and once i was done just taking 
taking a look from the top of my base, it looks pretty cool having torches everywhere and little spikes spread all around my giant spike. I also realized how awesome my axolot enclosure looks through this glass right here. It feels like I'm in some sort of museum. But anyways, I think it's time to upgrade my armor into netherite armor so I can go fight the ender dragon. So I hopped into the nether and went egg hunting for the ancient debris. After mining and using like half of my durability on my pickaxe, I finally found my first pieces of ancient debris. Do you guys hate mining for ancient debris as well? It takes so long. Why is this so rare to find? Mining for ancient debris feels like I'm mining for nothing. I'm just getting straight nether racket and like sometimes the surprise of lava. But anyway, soon enough, my pickaxe was just about to break and I was only able to collect eight ancient debris, which isn't a lot. So I went back home, baked up some more potatoes for food, made myself a quick anvil and repaired my diamond pickaxe and then went straight back to the nether to find some more ancient debris. About 10 years later, I finally found 10 more ancient debris, which makes up a total of 18. And with four netherite ingots, I was only able to upgrade my armor. But hey, now I look pretty baller. Only 20 minutes ago, I was naked with a stone pickaxe. Now I'm covered in netherite armor, ready to go steal the balls of the dragon. Why do I say things so weird all the time? But once I came back from the nether, I realized how long I was gone for because these vines were so long. They go past my home now. I can actually jump on them and be a monkey, swing around like Spider-Man or something. But it was finally time to kill the ender dragon. Well, not really because I needed a bow. Once I got my bow crafted, I went over to my grinder, got to level 30, and I ended up enchanting like three different bows, but I finally got infinity, power four, and flame. And I named it the Toast Spreader 3.0. I have no idea how I came up with that name. It just popped up in my head and i'm not sure where version 1 and 2 went but here it is the toy spider 3.0 the same exact bow hawkeye used in avengers trust me he told me himself but anyways i threw my first ever eye of ender and it popped my luck is insane and i continued mining straight for a long long time until i finally hit a cave where i can throw another eye of ender i probably mine like a thousand blocks too far but i threw another one and i started mining and to my surprise i actually hit right into the end portal and like i mean right into it I'm x-raying guys, I know. Nah, I'm just skilled. And I was even lucky enough to have an eye of ender already placed inside the portal because I only had 11 eyes of ender. What a blessing. I then explored the stronghold a little bit to see if I can find some cool chests or the library, but I, there was literally nothing in here. It was dead. So I just lighted up the portal and yeeted myself in. I spawned on an obsidian island, so I quickly speed bred bread. What? I'm so hungry. <laughs> I quickly speed bridged over to the main end island, and I ended up missing like my first five shots at the closest end crystal ever i'm just a pro at the game guys you guys don't need to tell me twice but anyways i shot down all of the crystals with my arrows which was pretty quick to be honest i was actually aiming pretty good after the first crystal surprisingly i mean my aim is pretty bad with the bow and then i started lighting up the dragon with my arrows like usual nothing you guys haven't seen before i mean at some points i couldn't miss though i mean like i hit like 10 in a row i then ended up killing the dragon with this long shot right into his butt nice Anyways, I collected his egg, and I had the perfect spot to put it. Right on top of my amethyst shrine. I mean, that throne is supposed to be for me, but hey, a dragon egg is pretty special. But on day 91, it was finally time. The moment everybody has been waiting for. I went into my chests, grabbed some iron, and made two shears. You guys know exactly what this means. Yup, that's right. Another manscaped ad. Use shears to shave your ball. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I went to go get some leaves off of the trees. Yes, leaves. Let's go. I feel so powerful now. Now. I feel like Thanos when he got all the infinity stones. You get like that surge of power. But that is me with leaves and like burritos and chips and sugar. And instead of getting energy, I get fatter and wider and more sad. And I, okay, next scene. It wasn't the oak or jungle leaves that I love. It was only birch. But leaves are leaves. I can't complain. And I covered my entire home with leaves all over the throne, over my pond, on the glass. I just put it everywhere. After all the leaves, I went exploring the caves even more and to my surprise i finally found goats all the way up on the top of the hill look how cute they are with their little beard and there were so many of them and none of them had a home well i guess i mean the cave is their home but like not a proper home so i had a bright idea i went over to the desert to grab some sand and i also had to go to the nether to grab some quartz i had a cool little project in mind i ended up mining so much quartz that my pickaxe was just about to break but i ended up getting four stacks of quartz blocks i don't even know why i mined so much i don't even need that much quartz I then made a lead with some slime balls so I can drag the ghosts into their new home. 
I then ran over back to the mountains to collect the goats. I then tried putting these two inside a hole so they wouldn't run away, but they ended up jumping right out. I forgot they could jump like 40 blocks. But anyways, I started working on a glass platform, which will eventually be their new home or their cage. I then slowly dragged the two goats into their glass home and then I locked them up in there. Wow, I am so cruel. Now on day 96, I started working on a huge sign right above their glass cage that I will be able to see from my base. It's kind of hard to show you guys what I'm building, so I'm just going to fast forward this. And this is the final and finished product. It says Jordan or Michael Jordan, the goat. If you guys don't know who Michael Jordan is, I'm going to be really disappointed in you guys. I could have built the Michael text, but I was kind of lazy. So the two goats are named Jordan and I can still see the sign Jordan at my base. It's kind of small. You can't really see the goats though. So I thought the brand new 1.17 spy glass would help me with this. I quickly made spy glass with some copper and some amethyst shards and zoomed in and I can see the goats in there. Hey, the spy glass actually comes in handy sometimes. And on day 97, I had no idea what to do. I was kind of bored, but I was hungry like usual. So I harvested my potatoes and I ran around my base for the rest of day 97, waiting for my potatoes to smelt. I was literally doing balls. Speaking of balls, this video is sponsored by man. I'm just kidding. I'm just messing with you guys. And I was throwing around. <coughs> oh my God. I was throwing around potatoes because I was so bored. And to finish off the video, I wanted to make an entire roller coaster all around this entire cave and claim it as the cookie cavern. But in order to do that, I need a lot of iron to make rails. So I started enchanting my diamond pickaxe for fortune three so I can start fortuning iron and get the whole bunch of iron raw ore thingy majiggy. -y. After a bit of enchanting, I finally got fortune three and I ran right back to my old mine shaft to start mining for some iron. And here's a super fast montage of me mining all of the iron off of the ground. Once I got out of the cave, I started mining down a tree because I need a lot of sticks for rails. And on day 99, I crafted all of my rails and I think I made a little too many. I got like nine stacks. But in the end, it still wasn't enough. I also grabbed all of my spruce wood that I haven't really used and turned it all into slabs so I have more blocks to build with. And to start off the roller coaster, I made it incline all the way up, just like a regular one, so I can have a fat drop. But I never made a drop because building downwards is so hard. But anyways, here's a quick time lapse of me building the roller coaster tracks. And so far, it was looking pretty good. With my spy glass, you can see that my roller coaster wraps around this spike right here, does a little loop, and the entire track is circling about halfway through the entire cavern. Well, time to keep working. I then started slapping down all of the rails. I also made this fat drop by the swamp area. Hopefully, the minecart will land on the rails, because if it doesn't, I'm going to die. But anyways, I'm going to fast forward all the way to the part where I'm going to test out the roller coaster finally. I put down my minecart, and I realized activator rails don't work like how I thought it would. I'm mistaking it with detector rails. Oh my god, I wasted all that time. So I ran around the entire track, putting down some wrestling torches beside these power rails so they become powered and they can push my minecart and the moment of truth let's test it out and it works this is so awesome i barely made it up the hill though but it works perfectly now i have an entire roller coaster that goes all around my cavern and i'm gonna call this cavern the cookie cavern it was a pretty fun ride especially the big drops they were the most fun anyways thank you guys so much for watching this video please go watch my second episode on my hardcore series and i'll see you guys later